All right, fuel injection systems. How about that? How about that? I guess we're gonna need this thing on. Not prepared. Well, as always, we'll edit this out so it's nice and smooth. All right, there's a lot of uh, different resources for you to read, even though you're probably just going to go to YouTube and do that. So let's see, fuel injection. Fuel injection. All right, let me see, benefits. Benefits. Uh, well, you have no vaporizing. No vapor icing. Uh, oh, that's things that make me crazy. What's my number? 2.6. Oscar. 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 Uniform delivery. Delivery of fuel to each cylinder. Okay, why do I have no vapor icing? Because it's inside of the inlet. Yeah, it's down in the inlet. It's not there at the throttle body anymore. Where the, so I'm going to call it throttle body now, where the <laughs> throttle, throttle is. A uniform delivery of fuel to each cylinder. Right, my six cylinder with the carburetor, it goes, well, it starts at the back of the engine and then goes forward. So, got two rich, two medium, two lean. Right? Easy. And this, now, if I can deliver the right fuel to each cylinder, yeah, all, all the then they'd be uniform and I wouldn't have this issue. Uh, improved control, which gives you improved control over the fuel air mixture. Right, because right back to the 0470, if I've got too rich, too peak, too lean a peak, it's kind of hard to actually control the fuel air mixture like I want to. But if they were all running where they're supposed to, then you can run them all rich a peak, all lean a peak, all peak, whatever you want to do. Uh, easier maintenance. Well, I don't know about that. You don't have a float to deal with. Depends on the system you have. I think that, uh, I don't know why, why, somebody wrote that, I don't know. The uh, continental fuel injection, yeah, if you do it right, it's kind of a maintenance pig. Uh, the RSA fuel injection system has a lot of diaphragms. Um, I'm gonna write this, better acceleration characteristics. I don't know about that. Um, increased efficiency. Okay, I'll go with that one. I crossed it out. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think it's any easier than a carburetor. Actually, carburetor takes less maintenance than the continental fuel injection. All right, basic design. Basic design. Well, how does automotive fuel injection work? Uh, what do you got? That's direct injection now. Direct injection. Yeah, which is pretty new technology. It's more like the diesel. diesel. Yeah. But let's go back a few years. Spray Port injection. Yeah. Port injection. Yeah, sprays it. Sprays it in the inlet. But right before, yeah, somewhere right before, the, uh, I had a Chevy, I know, sorry, with the throttle body injection, where it actually sprayed it over the throttle plates. Yeah, little, yeah. Um, which would be much more like a carburetor, if you ask me. Yeah, that's a pressure carburetor. Yeah, and, okay, but cars, kind of the same thing. Well, um, but with cars, they're computer controlled, right? Yep. So they're pulsed. Yep. To go when the intake valve opens, they don't. Now an aircraft, they're continuous. There's no pulsing. There's no guessing. They just spray. Oh. 
So it sprays, the intake valve opens, it closes, it still keeps <coughs> on a spray. Thus the name continuous fuel flow injection. I don't know, it blows your mind, huh? So there's no timing of it. Now you go back to what is it, Mercedes? Yeah, I think Mercedes had the first one. That's what the E class, the E stood, it's German word for, I think, fuel injection. And so, but they had to be timed, like I remember, the, you had to um, time it like a magneto so that the pulses would be going to the right cylinder at the right time, just like you would a magneto, but not an aircraft. So it uses continuous flow, <coughs> continuous flow, fuel nozzles located at cylinder intake. Cylinder intake. So this is right before the cylinder. It's on the cylinder. So I don't know if you guys can remember when you built your Lycoming engines, mm -hmm. on the cylinder there's an eighth inch pipe plug. Mm -hmm. It's torque on an eighth inch pipe plug, by the way. <laughs> not, a, not 110? So um, you pull out that pipe plug and it would go right about there. It's a little different spot, but it's right there in the intake. Uh, locate cylinder intake. Um, continuous flow means continuous flow means always flowing. Fuel is always flowing. Uh, that's in contrast to, contrast to, like cars, timed injection, or direct injection, which is also timed. So we don't have those. All right, there's a picture that I have up for some reason. At some point, I'll figure out why this picture is there. It is an airplane. It looks like a 172. I don't see any car heat. Okay, there's no carb heat because it's fuel injection. What else am I going to see? This gauge right here, fuel flow. There's a fuel flow gauge which you wouldn't normally have. Hey, 172, fuel flow right there. So, all right, we'll probably come back around to those. All right, we're gonna talk about the Bendix RSA fuel injection. For the most part, that is the Bendix RSA fuel injection system. You've got the fuel control unit all in one piece, the flow divider and the nozzles. So we're gonna talk all about that. There it is installed. I think the purpose of this slide, uh, does that, you look at that, does everything make sense to you? You're like, oh yeah, I see where all that yeah. is. Uh -huh. All right. You have your divider up there. Flow divider. Okay. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. Six cylinders. Seven. No, one for two, a red line. <laughs> it's, a red, it's a red tube. And the red tube, that's a hose. Yeah. So we're, gonna have, we're missing one on here. There should be one more. One. Two, three, four, back. five, six. Is it Must that be. blue fitting? No, that's capped. Is looks like. Underneath the blue fitting, there's another gold right there. What? <coughs> you look at yeah, the two between the two gold. That's not important. All right, so we'll have inlet, and then it'll go to all the cylinders, and then out. There are airworthiness directives on these lines. They are obviously very sensitive little lines. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people mistake them for primer lines and they'll swap out and they get the wrong size on there. But there's an airworthiness directive on exactly where these clamps go in all Lycomings. Wow. So you have to put them exactly where they go with the right part number. What has he got a plug in for? Heat. Yeah, heat. Block yep. See that band right there? Yep. Yep. That's uh, a. Blocky's in a cold environment. Yeah. There's a heat band. I forgot I could enlarge it.
Alright. Yep. <laughs> it's alright. Alright. Bendix. When you are in the lab and you are working on stuff. And I tell you a lot of things, and I'm always surprised. I'm like, I told you not to do that. We are working on the Bendix RSA fuel injection system. There's a precursor to that. And if you open the book and you start reading the precursor, you'll be like, wow, Kevin really didn't know what he was talking about. Man, this thing works really different because I'm not talking about that one. We're talking about the RSA system. The other one's antiquated. So make sure you're reading about the RSA. Uh, Bendix, RSA. What the hell is A? Oh. That is one of two popular, popular injection systems. The other popular one will be the Continental. So guess which engines use the Continental? <laughs> so Lycoming is going to use the Bendix and Continental use the Continental it used on Lycoming engines this is extra uh, designed to deliver fuel in relation to the volume of air being consumed why do I write stuff like this of course it is Mm -hmm. They get paid by the word. Designed to deliver fuel <coughs> in relation to the volume, really weight, of air being delivered, being consumed. How about that? Consumed. Accomplished. by using Venturi suction. You're like, okay, okay, I got that, right? And impact air, what does it sound like? Oh, it sure does. And guess what? Not. It is. No. Let's take a look. Is it like a car with a, with a all right, it's, it's the same, but a little different. A little different, but the concepts are pretty much the same. So all right, we have airflow comes into the what? What is that? Impact tube. Impact tube comes through here, fills this, and what do we have right here in the middle? A poppet valve. All right, so impact air is going to come in and force this chamber to go to the to the right. And then we have what? Venturi suction. Venturi suction. It can be green, I guess. Venturi suction, which is going to go out through the venturi and help move the poppet to the right. Right. Okay. So far, that sounds about the same, doesn't it? Okay, it changes a little bit here. So we've got fuel pump, boost pump comes through, and we go through our main orifice. So we have fuel coming in this way and this way. <coughs> Which one is more? We'll call this A, B, C, D. I'm just making up numbers right now. So which one has got the most? C. C. Because it is unmetered. And D is? Metered. 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 So we have more in this one, so it tends to push. Move the poppet to the left. Left. It tends to want to close it. And D pushes it open. Right. It wants to help it. So really it was more like this one I should have called D. Yeah, I should have called this one D, right? And I should have called this one. C, yeah. that would make a little more sense because okay. that's what we're used to, huh? Yeah. Okay, so air metering force is? A plus B. A plus B. Uh, fuel metering force is? 
D minus C. D minus C. The bigger number goes first. Is C constant, just like on the first one? No. Um, you can see that there's nothing there, so it's just going to be. But there's no pressure relief valve to change it. So if the fuel pump's putting out a little more fuel, it's going to change. If the fuel pump backs off, it's not. Now remember, what is this fuel pump? What kind of pump do we have? Constant. Constant displacement. He says constant displacement. Anybody get second that motion? Second. All in favor? Aye. It's a diaphragm pump. That's why you don't trust it. It's a light combing. You guys built a light combing. Oh, my pardon. It's a light combing, that's why. It's a light combing, so it's going to have a wobble pump. Wobble pump. It's going to have a diaphragm pump. All right. Uh, let's see. Main components, throttle valve, fuel servo, flow divider, injection nozzles, fuel pump. All right, let's uh, write some stuff here. Mm. Let me see. Compli okay, D. No. C. A, B, C. Okay, good. Uh, similar to pressure injection carbs. So similar to a pressure carb. Oh, that should have went right here. There, and then it's designed to deliver fuel. That, okay, now it's why I'm at D, because I missed a little point. So main components. Again, we'll just take care of that in editing. It's okay. Nobody even notice. All right, throttle valve. All right, that's just your valve. You're used to that. There we go, do that. Uh, we have the fuel servo. We have the flow divider. Uh, so the fuel servo, that's that's the box. We're gonna break that down into some other pieces too, but for right now, we'll just call this whole thing the fuel servo. And then we have Flow divider right there. Maybe we can go this way. What the heck? There we go. Got the flow divider up here. Flow divider and injector nozzle and fuel pump. Flow divider, injector nozzles, and the fuel pump. Should say pumps because there's two of them, right? Operation. All right, so similar to the pressure carb, or I can say just like, just like the pressure carb. Pressure carb, Venturi. And impact tubes, impact tubes create air metering force. Okay, this one is a little weird, but you really got to get this one. So the, I'll say it and then I'll write it. The fuel nozzles are designed to operate at a particular pressure because they're an orifice. And you want the right amount of flow. So flow, you have a fixed orifice, you have to have the right flow. How do you get the right flow out of a fixed orifice? Thank you. Pressure. So we have to have the right pressure. pressure. Okay. <laughs> so what I'm going to write is fuel nozzles are designed to operate at a proper pressure. pressure. 
Therefore, the fuel control unit is designed to regulate pressure, pressure, pressure. not volume. Now, did we see that with the float carb? No. No, it was, it was all about the, the flow. And then we got into pressure carbs. Now it's flow and pressure. It was, well, you had the, the pressure relief nozzle, which is the discharge <laughs> nozzle. But really, it was just pressure kind of activated it to get the flow. So it's a little, little the same there. Now, this is all pressure. Yep. Uh, fuel nozzles are designed designed to operate to operate at a proper pressure at a proper pressure now remember in the the nozzles are an orifice they're not adjustable and they've got to work all the way through full throttle to idle at a proper pressure therefore did you like it when I write? Therefore, uh, fuel control, fuel control is, unit is designed to regulate pressure, pressure, not volume. All right, and it's break time.